Now, as far as the mechanics of these Panasonic G mechanisms, um, you'll need to take the front cover off, take the bottom cover off, top cover off, of course. And um, a lot of the um, diagnosis and stuff of these you can do by hand. These mechanisms, you just wind them through by hand. So you've got your capstan motor there and this belt. Um, this is a hi-fi one, so it's got this extra bit of stuff here. There is alignment instructions. I think that electrotanya.net or whatever it is site has one of the G mechanism alignment books. Tells you how to line all the mechanical stuff up, but most of the time you won't need to fiddle with any of this. Um, you do get problems with the loading unit sometimes getting out of whack. Uh, the mode switch playing up. Um, so with the mode switch, you just really got to get that in the right position where the um, markings line up so you can remove it and then put it back in that position. Um, if you take out the eject mechanism, you obviously got to get that lined up right. Um, but the main Main thing with this deck, occasionally yeah, you'll get something like one of these tape guides, the plastic bit will fail, because they're, they're sort of sprung on these springs, and eventually the tab can break off the spring or something like that, and they won't fully load, so you've got to remove those and get them lined back up, but they're actually only a couple of holes right next to each other, and this other plate here which you have to remove, but all these gears under here have various holes in them, or other markings to line them up, but there you just put them all in, you can just basically remove this metal plate here with the, the tensioner for the belt. That's just one screw and that and this little circlip, or two circlips actually. Um, that comes out, and then this other metal plate I think just pulls out after that, just lifts up. But of course you need to, there's pins on this and holes and stuff, so you've got to get all that aligned. But it's not too bad, but the main thing, as far as the mechanism, it doesn't have a load motor, it's actually this capstan motor belt here and this big wheel here which actually does the reels as well. I think that you can see the gears turning. This is what actually does all the, the loading and unloading of the mechanism, the eject mechanism, lacing up the tape. Everything's done via this. And we have a solenoid under here. Now, I did have a look at the, there's a video online on these. Looks like a factory video. They talk about operating the solenoid from above, but I've always done it. The, the manual that I had for this mechanism, which I'd long since got rid of, I, it tells you to use this little, there's a little plastic lever here and every time when you wind it the deck will stop at various stages and you just flick that so what, once you get used to these you can basically observe the behaviour from above once you remove this loading deck and it's just a matter of putting your fing one hand on a finger on that lever and one on the the real thing there, this this wheel so you have one hand underneath of the finger on that, so you can flick it when you need to. The other finger in one of these holes, and you just rotate this as you need. Sometimes you need to go forward, sometimes backwards, and each time the deck stops, you flick this thing there, and you can run the deck through all its operations that way. I find it easier to do from above, unless you've got to look at anything from below. But so, so one finger on one, one on the other, and you can see this is starting to load in. This, this won't get very far before we have a little lever there, and I think there's another piece here on the other side. So we'll keep winding that. It'll catch a second time. And yeah, we have a little uh, a little bit sticks up there. This is to stop kids loading in a piece of toast or something. I think we keep winding to yeah, where it clicks. Now I'm still turning the wheel, but nothing's happening. We've got these arms partly loaded out half load type arm so at this stage I think this is the mode where the mechanism is lined up again in the video online they tell you to you can put this back in in the loaded up position uh, which is quite complex you've got to fiddle around getting the gears lined up and count so many teeth and stuff which is not the way I ever learned to do it because the manual I had just suggested doing it with the the deck loaded in because um, the screws are basically hidden. There's a screw there and on either side, which I think you can get to, probably not when it's fully loaded up, and then there's one down the back here somewhere and one over here. So you've really got to pull this slightly apart. I think that actually might have to pull that wire out at one end, but you can usually leave it there so this whole top plate comes off. That can go to one side. And 
and then it's how do you get this bit out maybe you had to do it in the up position that might have been it actually so if I click that if we go in reverse clicking that little lever off the solenoid that's right this has got to be in this position or slightly in been quite a while since I've touched one of these. I think what I used to do is take that top plate off, then remove this. Then we can get to the, the deck. But I think the deck, to get the alignment marks, it's best to wind this down now because this will go in easily. Which way are we going? That's the end. Because that other, there's nothing to catch now. So wind that to the first stop point. That's got a dot there, and I think we should have the slot. Yeah. So there's a slot on this little die cast wheel here. And that lines with the first tooth on the plate that slides under this thing. Um, we've also got this connector here. I think we just normally pull that little plastic bit up on the outside, and then we pull that four pin wire out. Then there's four of these red screws. can take this the rest of the loading mechanism out but yeah this is an amazingly clean condition for its age this one so very rare that there's not more dust in these things and then there's one screw down the back here the fourth one and then this just lifts out basically got that whole part out just be careful not to twist this round too much or anything and um, we should have yeah the very first tooth on this plate which can move if you move these bits up and down these will actually without much of a push will probably spring back up yes yeah, so that should be pushed down this end bit should be down and that'll get this to the last two through this little hole here that's one of our alignment points because looking through that hole we're looking at this die cast gear here and that should have a little slot in it here which points that way there's a little dot other marker here which there should be I think it's further in if you look from underneath there's a or is it down that slot somewhere there's a mark on this gear as well so now we can access the solenoid. You could push on the actual solenoid from above. That just basically pushes that little lever underneath. You can hear that clicking. So if we keep winding, we've only got these half load arms out part way. If I keep winding, they'll go full in place. And then again, the, I'm still turning the wheel, but nothing's happening. So to get the unit to lace up, we can press on that. Or we'll do the lever belay, you start seeing the pinch roller here's gear starting to move, doesn't go very far. And then I think it stops another time yet before it gets to the end. And pinch roller's still not engaged, but the tape guides are home. So you can just if if you wind it by hand, you'll soon feel if anything, if you feel any resistance doing this, um, you'll know something's wrong. I think when this arm breaks, sometimes the little piece goes down there and jams or something. But um, you'll soon realise if anything's out of whack. And of course you watch the operation, everything looks like it's going where it should. Now our pinch roller's come in and engaged and our reel starts turning. So we're basically in play mode at this point. There is a little bit of noise there somewhere on that. As soon as that reel engages. Something's a little noisy here. Could even be from memory. This thing, this plastic bit here, if you turn that round, actually pushes the the magnet assembly and the shaft of the capstan motor down. Because that sounds a bit like it's scraping. Or actually it could be another thing it can be, there is a Ah yeah, this brake pad. That's it. That's what's making that noise. Yeah, that's him. So this little arm here, which is actually quite stiff, that shouldn't stay up like that, so that probably needs a lubrication. Yeah, it's not real happy. But there's a little, this plastic arm has a little brake pad. You can see the marks where it's scraped into the capstan. 
I think they do sometimes get a bit noisy and or come off completely so you got to you could it used to be able to buy a sheet of this material these little brake pad some of them are foam you know, I think that's a kind of foamy one with a, like a sticky back on it so you could put one of those, pull the old pad off and stick a new one on there not sure what's available these days but you can probably still get that stuff so I have to do something with that because it's stiff but basically yeah we can see everything's in place these should be fully bedded in and you can push them back but they they return right into this little guide bit at the end uh, we've got a tension arm back another thing that used to fail in national videos is the foam used to come off this brake band which goes around the supply reel that's a little noisy but that's not too bad so um, yeah the felt used to fall off and there was, that would reduce the back tension you'd have to replace or either glue on a new bit of felt or even the old one back on or replace these I don't think they really failed in these G mechanisms but I've, possibly I've had one of the plastic ends come on um, detached on one of these um, maybe even that little bit where it's attached to the, the back tension arm here it just clips on those sort of things can break if the plastic goes brittle but pretty rare they seem to be pretty good quality um, again there's other brake pads here which can also cause problems but they look like they're not in too bad condition um, they should obviously disengage when you're in play mode to allow these reels to turn uh, pinch roll should be right on the capstan motor so if I turn that wheel I'm turning the capstan motor and we can see our pinch roll is rotating um, yeah like I say that's the arms are in place this other little arms it's on the other side of the pinch roller and I think our eject mechanism shouldn't move at all but if we give the solenoid a click again and go back the other way you'll start seeing pinch roller disengages and it stops and we're winding winding the tape back in at this point because our guides are coming back so even though the tape these arms haven't come back yet this you want to make sure this reel is going in reverse because as these come back obviously the tape was out here we need to be winding it back into the case or we're going to have tape hanging out everywhere and that's going to get caught on things and chewed now our little half load arms are coming back and this should stop any second now oh actually we've gone right back I should have stopped there that's fully revert, fully ejected it comes to an end yeah so that you feel it stop so it should be very free until you get to this very last point which I don't need to press the solenoid to get that back uh, back the other way I'm actually going relatively anti-clockwise looking from above now I need to get this gear back into position which is when those little arms the first stop point basically those arms come out so you'll see there's a little again that little slotted bit is back over here Got these arms out so we can grab our loading mechanism and just make sure this this bit's pushed home it's not up at all make sure that first tooth you can see it under that hole there like a little sight whoops as soon as I touch anything that moves up so I've got that little sighting thing there and it's a matter of just lowering it back in the screw holes reach there and we just make sure that often you have to I forget how you do it now just push maybe push that down you just have to move it oh yeah if we push on the that white bit it probably moved up a bit just make sure that first tooth goes in through that little side hole there into the slot or where the slot is marked on that little loading gear yes yeah, so if I press on that that lifts that back up again which is not very convenient so I'm going to have to get a screw back in there they're quite flimsy these mechanisms when they're out of them well, I've got the top off them and out of the machine or just with the top off there and unscrewed off the deck let's put that in and just it's just kind of lifting itself back up 
right, so just a minute, I'll get all these screws back in because you can't get to them afterwards and it helps hold the mechanism stiff which is what you want with this and our doors just popped out a little bit so nothing to keep an eye on while this thing's apart the door easily these bits can flex apart more and the door can pop out of its locating holes so that's all back so again we'll we can use the solenoid from above or we can flick this little lever from below there is it there so you get quite adept at if you do enough of these oh, what have we got now oh, here we go I felt like it had jammed up then but it's coming back up our little arm here we want the, these arms up into the slots I've probably got a little bit too far the slots line up with these holes in the top and then we can drop this back in just making sure it slots down those two slots and then these other bits here they just should start going along the, the little track for them and this last lever has to fit in that hole it sits above the plastic there so we can actually even wind that back out a little bit more Oop, wrong way into the fully finished so that's actually come to an end can't turn the mechanism anymore that looks all right one thing I used to do there is something can break on these I forget exactly what part it was something on this end I think so what I use because I got caught with a customer once fixed some other problem with the machine and then it came back again jammed again and there's something broke on one of these I always used to test these by just pushing them in with no tape so that they went to the to this little drop down bit here with this lever and they jammed basically because there was nothing pressing these these levers that one's activated there and the mechanism will just load a certain way in and stop it'll basically jam a little bit which puts a little bit of tension on it and if there's something wrong with it that can actually put the mechanism back out of alignment but if it's a good mech it should just go back stop and then eject again with no further problems it'll load a tape the next time that was one little trick. I think I only ever ever had the one machine that did it, but I used to used to always check that. So I've just got to slot this metal bit, a couple of metal bits sticking up here. They go into these little bits where we just drop the mech in. Start putting our wire back in place, and we can put the two top screws back on that. Yeah, they are a little little flimsy these mechanisms on even at this point but once these two front screws are in she she's pretty solid after that now those four went down the back there these two go in the front too push the little release bit on the connector there back down and slot this back under the tabs just so that can't get jammed up, actually I should have done that in first can't get jammed up by the lid or anything let me put that back on that's all good those two I think we need to put them in after the front panel goes in so we should have a working machine again now Oop. so that's the sort of test I must have had that in a little bit because it tried to load but if you do that test and it doesn't break anything, doesn't put anything out of alignment, then the machine should be good, but if there's something wrong with this loading mechanism ooh, that's not good I've got something wrong here that's weird very weird That's not quite how you do it then. Ooh, I'm not going to turn the machine off before it does anything. Oh, that made a liar out of me. Maybe that makes me get out of alignment when when that went. To start with. So it is a good test of that because it does seem to be out of whack with the main mechanism now 
I've reached the end, but the mechanism isn't coming back. So that's usually a sign that something is out of whack. So maybe this does have a something iffy with a loading mech. But we can soon put the bits and check. Or maybe I didn't get that quite right, but I'm pretty sure that was how they lined up. Yeah, now we've got a problem. How am I going to get that out? Mm. Can I get that to wind back? It doesn't seem to want to. I don't know. This was actually still in the play mode. back. Yeah, something has got out of whack there, I think. Alright, we can lift that back out. And it doesn't really matter what position it's in when you take this back out. This should come out in any position as long as you can get that that bit I just took out up into the upper position. And it's under tension now, so it's going to be a little bit unhappy about me taking it out. I think. Hmm, it's strange, it does not want to come out. Okay. loading there, yeah, now that's not happy at all. It's come out though. Bit of tension there, so that's definitely in the right position, that gear. Yeah, there was something, oh yeah, that was the bit that broke. Oh yeah, that is a little bit iffy on this one. By the look of it, I think it was this a little plastic clip that holds this plate on this metal tooth bit onto the onto the plastic here I think that was the bit that used to break off here yeah, that's oh yeah that's the bit yeah it's not the it is actually broken by the look of it yeah now that was the piece great this has got a slightly iffy mechanism in it so it's this little piece here I don't know if you can see that that's exactly the problem I had with the one before. Because it's very flimsy, there's a little bit of plastic here. Very fine one. And if that breaks, which this one is, then it allows this, this to lean out from the plastic. And I think that's when it jams, when it loads in with no tape. Something manages this. I think this manages to pop outwards and then it comes out of alignment with this gear on the base of the machine i think that's what, what was the problem i think yeah the, yeah the amount of tension on it because that's where our tooth pieces on this metal bit i think that actually put bends outwards a bit and that allows this gear to slip past it so there you go this one does actually have that problem because it, it was a very flimsy bit tiny little bit of plastic there and with people pushing in this thing in and out all the time it could cause problems so we'll just check that seems to I should be in the right position yeah the first stop point and that gears right can't tell if it's lined with the other one properly but it looks to be so if we put that back in and we've got to make sure again that the push down on that so that that first tooth goes into that slot a bit there. Yeah, problem is 
in the old days I'd have a few of these lying around I could just pull another loading mech out and replace it but you'd probably be lucky to even buy one new these days so I might have to just be a bit careful with the, the loading mech in this one not to force it or anything because that, that'll possibly pop out of alignment chances are it's probably been broken for years and never had a problem but there is a risk of that getting out of whack Back out. That. And wrong way, of course. Let's back a little bit. So we can put that bit in. And back out again. Thin, so that maybe that is out. Yeah, this mechanism is not too happy. Alright, that's, yeah, that's fully out. That's alright. again Light mode, I'll reverse our way back out of there. Let's see with the deck in much easier to click this solenoid from below. And we're back to the stop position. Not sure that's gonna fly down that connector, let's just plug that in a bit better. Yeah, this seems to be home, they've just stripped a bit much off it, I think. Okay. Back. See if it lays with the tape all right, seems to be. No problem, I don't have any buttons on this machine now. And then, you must switch off the power to bump this red plate Plug the power saw in and then test out the switch on the trigger strap. Switch on. Let's turn it off. So it unlaces properly. And turn it off for the power point. And we don't need to worry about the door on this one. Oh, these damn sliders, make sure they're in the right position. Put them right to one end, put the pots to one end. So we can put this front panel back on properly. Yep, slider's good. through its paces a bit, make sure everything's working. I 
think another problem with these is people tended to push the tape in too far when you only just got to give it a slight it doesn't feel like it's doing anything because it's got that silly delay on it but you just got to push it in a bit wait a half a second for it to start taking it in and then test all your functions vision search we'll stop it and then we'll try a proper rewind fast forward if it wants to work I think these machines vary as they get through the tape. They start off a bit slow. Here it goes. So it's making a bit of a funny noise. Stronger hand, the right hand in most cases, to hold the wood firmly. One of the best ways is to bunch your fingers together and push on the back edge. Now I've still got to fix that brake lever underneath. But this all seems to work, but yeah, like I say, just with these you just push the tape in a bit. It doesn't feel like anything's happening, but it will eventually grab it. On the back. But because they don't have an instant response like some of the older machines, they do feel like they've got to keep pushing it. I think people might have pushed them a bit too far. Turn it off. Now, yeah, where is it? This little. Yeah, that's quite seized. So, it might be a chance to actually. This belt just comes off like that. These pulleys do wear out a bit. This one's actually got quite a bit of play in it. Because it, the belt's pushing it sort of against it, it tends to wear out around this pin. So, that's not perfect, but it didn't seem to worry him too much. Then we've got a screw here. And a couple of circ clips, which I can probably usually these sit up enough. You can just get a screwdriver under it, and there's grease under them, and you just lift them off. And this little plate comes up with the pulley and stuff. We can start seeing some of our alignment holes. Um, I'm not in the right mode because I'm ejected. Once you get that, I think into that first click position with the the mechanism, the loading mechanism in. And those half load arms slightly out, all these holes should line up um, right from the, the gear here, which goes up to the loading gear. Through this gear, there's another gear underneath. I think that's the one with a few little planetary gears on it, and there's another one underneath. So there's quite a few different things, but um, they're not too hard to get lined up according to how following in the manual. But this is here, yeah, this is stiff. This has got a, a spring on it here. We should force that down but if I push it right up spring does nothing so it's basically seized onto here don't think I've ever had a problem with one of these before it doesn't I'm sure I would have thought they would have a circlip or something to hold it there but this must just yeah it's just coming just watch this spring doesn't go flying it must just hold on in that little slot there so we'll take this is that spring coming with it it should be I'm just moving it back and forwards and pulling outwards. So that's come off here. Yeah, grease is just like a dry powdered sort of muck there. So I found a cotton bud. And use a bit of methylated spirits. And on that pin, just remove all the old grease. And around the end of it, there's usually some horrible sticky mess. If it's either dry or it's turns to like a really sticky, viscous, dried out sort of material. So you want to get remove all of that from that pin. So it can't cause any further problems. Probably not that important to get every last bit, but I like to try and remove as much as possible. And same on this little hole through this brake lever. So it's just got a little felt pad on the end here and this spring on the end, on the side. 
probably should sit under there, but anyway, I'll leave that untensioned as much as possible so it doesn't fly off. Now, ideally, I probably should clean down in that hole, but even just putting it back now will go, yeah, much that moves as easy as. But I'll rub that up and down here a bit and then wipe anything off that it leaves behind on this shaft. It's often the easiest way to clean it out. Again, if it was a customer repair, I'd probably try and get something down that hole, even if it's a bit of paper towel with metho on it, and just poke it down with a little... I should have a little precision screwdriver here somewhere. Get one of these tiny little jeweler screwdrivers. There's enough room there. I'll just get a little bit of... Because you won't, you won't get many things that'll fit down a hole that small, so you can just soak a bit of paper towel in some metho. And just poke it down the hole basically and jiggle it around a bit. And just make sure you remove it all again. Any bits left will push out anyway, but that should have removed all traces of dried up grease or sticky grease. So that just falls now even without the spring. Just double check I've got all that off there. Give it one more clean and that should be fine. Uh, just let the metho dry off a bit. I've got a bit of this Connie Polyglide, which was made for plastic. But any sort of grease should do. Any just light, light duty grease. Or well, not very viscous grease. I guess that's more the case. Slide that back on again. Now, yeah, where are we? That's that's the top of it. So that must go on like that. Oh, there goes the spring. Go on like that. Yeah, other way. And I think just the fact that little piece there comes through that slot in the middle is enough to stop it coming off again. Actually, that other bit of spring, I think, has to go above. Yeah, it was. It was on top of the metal. So if we put that in there... So how do we do that? We just have to lift that up. There's always a fiddly way. Hold that spring up. Ah, that's not much fun. What do we have to... I don't know how they do that. There's always a knack to these things. Yeah, really not a good design. Maybe we put the spring on first. Get the lever on and slot it into that little slot and then we'll have to flick the top. That top bit that's bent over for the top, flick that right around you and sit it on top. So now if we lift this up, no, ah, oh, it's actually the springs managed to fall under again. So I want the spring above the metal plate here. I'll just put my finger on that to make sure it stays there. And we have to slot this into that slot. Yeah, it must have just slipped out. Get that in there now, we're right. So end of the spring above the metal plate, other end above the plastic. So now we've got a, a lever that flicks back. So, if there's nothing pushing on this... Oh, yeah, I wonder how that works. Nothing f flicking that, I guess something probably... Oh, it's this arm here, I think, lifts it, pushes that up. So once that arm, this metal arm, once this bit slides across is out of the way, this should flick back down and touch the motor. So as I put this back in, that should rise up, I think, on this here, because this bit's there. Oh no, it is actually on the motor at the moment. Screw back. Yeah, ideally I would like to replace that pulley, but I say most of them, after a few years, were pretty worn. Had a bit of play in them. These I just press back on and push them down with a pair of pliers till they hit the base. You don't really need a circlip tool. Most of the time it's quicker just to do it something like this. I might move that one around. 
so it's definitely not in the way of anything and push it down like that and yeah by the time it takes to find some circlip pliers you can fix it anyway so this should again moves freely now it may still make a bit of noise against the motor just because that pad's a bit worn it's just a matter of get that on there just give it a spin make sure it's right don't think I've ever had to adjust the tension on one of those. I mean, possibly it could do with a little bit more tension because it's it's not bad because that's worn out and tilting over a bit. But I've never, don't think I've ever don't know if I've ever had one of these belts break. Possibly they're ultra reliable, and I don't think I've ever had one slip off these pulleys, even though they've got a bit of that play in them. I can't remember what mode that was making a noise in now, but. I think it was when I manually ran it. Uh, power would be handy. Oop, I stuffed up something's not right. Ah, oh. oh, that should have been in the right spot. And if that mechanism's got out again on its own, so it's definitely a problem with that. If you let it load in on its own. I don't know why that didn't go in right, because I didn't adjust it then. There we go. So let's turn that off. So yeah, this loading mech is a little iffy. I'm not sure if it got out of whack yet. It has, has it obviously slipped on the loading gear. That's that brake pad still making a noise. Yeah, so it's a bit squealy, which they used to do. So that really wants a new bit of brake pad on there, ideally. It, it doesn't affect its performance, I don't think, but it just makes that annoying noise. Which, now that I think of it, was quite common in these machines here. So this loading mech has slipped again. Hit the end. That'll be right. So ideally this machine wants a new or either end plate or complete mechanism. But you'd be lucky to get one these days. But I'll keep an eye out though they did sell hundreds of these machines. And I think the loading mechs from memory are the same in every single G mech. So even if I can get a broken one with a good end plate, I can change that. It's not hard to do. Or if I can get the whole mechanism, I can just swap the whole loading mech. But I doubt I'll be using this machine much as a couple of tapes I might have a play around with in it since I do actually have. A DVD recorder or VCR combo with DVD recorder in it lying around here somewhere if I really need to play a VHS tape but I don't think I've used a VHS tape in 15 years or something but it would be nice to have a machine yeah, can I get this fully out there we go Um, the record quality on these things. I used to record some radio, some music shows on off radio, off FM stereo, just because they were on late at night and went for like three hours into the, one in the morning or something. So I couldn't be bothered staying up to listen to them. I mean, half the songs weren't that good anyway. So I used to record it on a hi-fi video and then play it back while I was working or something, just to have a listen to the show and fast forward through any stuff I didn't want to listen to. But um, the sound quality on these is almost is as good as. FM stereo and I later used a DVD recorder that was a Panasonic as well one of the ones that had DVD RAM and normal DVD and stuff and yeah the DVD audio is terrible compared to these things I guess because they have, have to use so much of the available data on the DVD format for video they've actually cut the the audio down a lot, it's nowhere near CD quality or anything, you'd think it would be, but since it comes off a disc, but 
So these are actually brilliant for recording audio onto. Um, like I say, they're almost as good as FM, the original FM signal, or if you recorded a CD onto one of these, I'm sure it'd be close to to CD quality. Yeah, you know, as long as there's no, you've got a good tape and there's no dropouts and the heads in the machine are good, because that's about the only thing you get the odd sort of buzz or whatever from tape dropouts. But if you had a good tape and a good machine. Uh, it was amazing the quality of these units. So that's probably one way in which the old VHS Hi-Fi is still a useful product. But of course if you've got a Blu-ray recorder or something, I'd, I think they're more up to the standard now, but there was a bit of a gap there for a while where if you wanted to record high quality stereo, you'd either, either have to get a CD recorder, which were a fairly rare machine, but they were around, or a mini disc, which yeah never really took off very well. Um, but you couldn't use DVD for audio recording because it was pretty low quality, um, quite compressed or something, and yeah, not not a lot of data used for it. You know, certainly noticeably worse than Hi-Fi or CD, whereas MP3 tends to be pretty close. Um, DVD audio was. Far worse. Uh, now what have I got to do? Eject it again. Where's my lever? Always go the wrong way. Oh, two springs. Don't know why. I'll listen to wind it clockwise first which is the wrong way when you're trying to eject. Okay, yeah, this makes a bit on the dicky side. So I'm just going to try and watch that it doesn't try to load itself in with no tape. Or oh, it's going to get out of alignment. And I don't want to have to pull it apart each time to try and realign it. But, like I say, this machine is not going to have much use and I'll just have to keep an eye out for a for one on the in the e-waste or somewhere and pinch the loading mech out of that but yeah they work, work what a flimsy mechanism these ones and again if you jam all the plastic gears in these if you do jam them they do break rather easily I'm going to just check it I guess with the front off Oh, actually, I don't want to check it with the front off because I've got no buttons then. Let's check the level pots again. So be something to with the the light getting in on this. I think these that's probably yeah, that's what that connector would be for, I think. Or is it? Yeah. So I've got a little infrared LED in the middle that goes up a up this hole in the tape. And you got these little holes in the end of the tape. And what happens is when this gets to the leader tape, as long as there's some of this oxide coated tape there then the light can't get from this to either of those end holes but as soon as it gets to the clear leader tape the light will come out either one end or the other and that goes to these, there's a little photo transistor or photo diode I think it is on each end of the mechanism and what happens is when we've got the lid off like this sometimes that'll one of those will get triggered or something and because um, often they use them as well for when you push push the mechanism in this infrared little LED will be on and yeah, it's not that end but I think the other end 
can't really see where the hole is but often a lot of these machines rather than have a little switch here or something to detect the tapes in as soon as this mechanism starts pushing in it actually blocks one of the photo diodes off obviously the mode switch and stuff knows the machine's ejected so if one of those photo diodes gets blocked um, or it could be that it gets light it depends sometimes they block them so can it, having external lights into the machine because of the lid being off it can set off one of those photo diodes and it'll start trying to load a tape in automatically because it thinks you've actually pushed the, the mechanism in so that could be why that takes off occasionally it seemed to take off last time after i played with it and just tried to load itself in for no reason so it might be a bit of light getting in there so this thing's still squealy I think the other option is you can actually just rough these up a little bit if I remember rightly the surface of the actual pad gets a bit sort of polished these are going to be a bit harder to get off now I do have some circuit pliers but I'm not sure if I've got any small ones but you can get it just a dual screwdriver under these start lifting them up I'll put the screw put all the pieces together. At least in these machines they're not. There's a little bit of flex there so you can get under these. Lift them off. Making sure you don't bend them. Yeah, that kind of instead of being felt here, yeah, you can see almost a shine on that. I don't know if the camera will pick that up. But it is slightly shiny, that little pad on the end here. So you can just get a screwdriver or something and just be careful not to tear it off the actual because they're only stuck on a little bit of like double sided tape well, I think you could even, some of these you could actually peel a layer off them because they're like a layer of felt again being careful not to pull it off <sighs> but yeah that's kind of took the shine off it That's probably enough to reduce the noise on that. Since I don't have any, I might actually have some of that felt somewhere. I can't remember. I don't think I do, and I can't be bothered looking. God, yeah, I can't. No, I don't know what I did with all my VCR stuff. I gave most of it to another place after I shut my shop down. That I was working for on contracts, so I gave them most of the remaining parts and stuff I had because I had no use for them. I mean, I'd run my stock right down, so there wasn't much anyway. So they might have got all that. But look, it's possible I did keep that felt pad and stuff somewhere, so I might actually have it around here, but I haven't seen it in so long, I don't know where it is. So I think we'll just rough this one up. Yeah, it's still making a noise. <laughs> This is fully ejected and it's going in. Fully ejected. But with the covers back on, you're probably not going to notice too much of that squealing noise. But I think these lights might be part of our problem here. Bit. Yeah, no, it's still, still squealing a bit. And forwards into the workstop. Side the bearing channels. Look. That's looking pretty good. At least this is not a machine with an old and, uh, rubber uh, idler tire in it. So I don't have to worry about this chewing tapes generally. I don't know if I've ever had one of these chew tapes, but because they're mostly mechanical gears, they're pretty unlikely to ever chew a tape. But yeah, this machine's probably as good as I can get it at the moment. It's fully recapped in the power supply, cleaned everything in the tape path. All the grease looks to be pretty good in it. It's just that dodgy end on the end of this mechanism, but once the lid's back on, um, there's not much chance of it. I'm certainly not going to be doing anything to make it try and load with no tape in there, so it should never 
get out of alignment. But yeah, if you force it or something, it's certainly going to. If it loads in without a tape or if it's pushed too hard, it will probably pop out again. But I get a feeling there's probably tons of them out there before I checked them, learned to check them after I had that one problem with a customer. There were probably heaps of them broken that I never noticed and no one was rough enough on them to cause any problems. But once I did know the problem, I don't think I did find another one. It's possible I did, I can't really remember now, but that is such a flimsy bit of plastic on that end. That takes very little to break it. And I mean, it's been probably 15 years since I've fixed one of these, so this one's even older now. I mean, this is basically what I think the motor said 1990 in this one, so it's a 30 year old machine, so the plastic's bound to be getting a bit more brittle in these machines now. Uh, what do I do with the lid off it? Always the problem with VCRs, can never seem to remember where you put the lid. We can put this thing fully back together. pots are working yep and that's always the knack with these things is once you put them back together just check everything because there's always the chance something hasn't put back in place some function isn't working so you really got to check everything out put it through all its paces always check any of these knobs and stuff in the front are working switches and stuff should be pretty right. But yeah, it'd be interesting to look at one of these again, so it's been a long time since I've even seen a G mechanism. I'm starting to wonder if any of them were still around. There's still a few of the um, K mechanism Panasonic's around, but they were a pretty unreliable Horrible plastic machine, they used to break just about everything in those. There was a big plate underneath, big slide plate that ran all the mechanism, they used to snap. The little pulley on the motor used to break. And I don't know if there was anything in those that didn't fail, they used to have thick film modules that the capacitors would fail on, and lots and lots of trouble with those machines. I think possibly the caps and motors may have gone in them as well. But well, there's no sawdust between the wood and the work stops because, of course, that will pack the wood work out from the work. It seems to be running fine. Noise filter. Hi fi normal mix tuner. Oh, that's, yeah, see, this, that's right. You could either you could have line audio, so AV inputs, tuner, obviously, which I haven't got. Oh, there's no analog signal anymore, anyway, but I could hook something up to that and simulcast on it. So I think if you went to line audio you needed a video source or it would, wouldn't record the audio from memory, at least on some of these machines. I'm not sure if this was the model I used to use, but it's close. But if you, I think you could go to simulcast and just feed any old... I think what I used to do was feed like a, an AV, a video signal out of a set-top box or something into it. So it had video, because I think if these don't get video sync pulses they consider there's nothing there and they just mute the audio. Um, even on record, so I think you'd go to simulcast, plug your tuner into the AV uh, stereo inputs, and then just on the video input you'd put something with, as long as it had a sync pulse or any old video picture. And I'm pretty sure, and it's also handy to have a... Maybe I just had the picture so I could see what I was doing, I can't remember now, but yeah, at least if you've got a picture there, if you're fast forwarding through it with audio, you've got some sort of reference. If you hook a TV up to it, you can actually see Besides the county, you've got a bit of a reference picture just so you can find your way around a bit easier. And there's a bit of dust on the front here too. Okay, I've got this Red Dwarf video. Picked up a few of these second hand, which was a great show back in the day. So, BBC video. We'll see what that's like. Interesting to see what a commercial tape looks like again. 
I think the picture quality is better than I really thought. Your home recordings weren't always the greatest, but... Something's still making a bit of noise in there. Yeah, that TV is not giving the greatest picture anyway. Music. Okay, let's try again. What is it? It's a banana. No, it isn't. Try again. What is it? It's a banana. No, it isn't. What is it? It's an. <clears throat> it's an. <clears throat> it's a. Yes. I just can't lie. I'm programmed always to tell the truth. It's easy. Look. Quite a good picture. It always looks a bit better on these little screens. I'll have to try that out on a, a larger screen after, but that's actually quite good picture quality. Probably is in the actual Hi-Fi stereo as well. Yeah, Hi-Fi, VHS Hi-Fi, so that's one good thing. Could hook this up to a stereo TV like most modern ones are, or even to an amplifier and get some nice sound out of that. Oh, might have to watch a few episodes of Red Dwarf and see how it goes. And uh, maybe you, I haven't tried the recording on this. I'll have to hook up a set top box or something and make sure that works. But chances are it should be fine. Our head still looked to be pretty good in this. Very few dropouts or anything. But anyway, that's that's what the G mechanism's like. They're not too bad to work on, but it's mainly about yeah winding it through by hand. And um, there are manuals that show you how to line all the gears up from memory. Like I said, it's when, when the deck's loaded in, into that first click position and the arm's out. That's where you set everything up. And they're not too bad to do. Um, as long as you just check, like if you get one that's out of whack, just check every gear for... That's why you wind it through by hand. If the gears are broken, you'll soon know when you're winding through it should run pretty freely. And then you'll hit, hit a dead spot there where it actually jams up or it's a bit tight. Um, and again, once if you do line the gears up, you always run it through a few times by hand. And if there is a tooth missing or something, you'll find the gears will get back out of alignment. It's about the only way they can really do it if you line them up properly. But um, yeah, like I say, there is a, is a manual to show you how to do all that. Um, but they, they're not as scary to work on as some people seem to think they were back in the day. Um, but yeah, the big problem now, I guess, is actually getting parts for these things. But as far as I know, pretty much all the Hi-Fi ones do have those extra bits in them. But I think all the gears and the loading mechanism and stuff is the same on all all machines. Um, obviously, the head drum in the Hi-Fi has got six heads. Uh, some of them will long play with four heads, and some were just the standard two heads. Going right back to, the, I think, the G7 was one of the earliest GMX, I think. Uh, well, that was still in the old silver case. Um, but I think most of the parts are fairly compatible, so if you can get a spare mechanism, um, you can pretty much swap everything over. I think caps the motor and everything again is all compatible, um, but I'm not 100% sure about that. They may have changed the electrical connections on those, or even the physical um, shape of them or something, uh, especially between like hi-fi machines and standard play and stuff. But um, yeah, most of these are fairly simple to work on. Um, most of the time you won't find any problem with the alignment other than like the in this one where the, the broken bit on the loading mech and that's got out of whack. Um, one of the arms is broken or something. One of the, the lace up, the uh, tape guide arms is broken and you may have to pull part of it apart and get, get those bits that you take out realigned. You should very rare. I think I've only once or twice ever had to realign the whole mechanism where someone's got a tape jammed in there and decided they can force it out themselves and they've broken things and got everything out of whack. But most of the time, you find 90% of it will be still aligned perfectly, and yeah, maybe some small amounts out. Um, again, or usually you would give the mode switch a clean. I forget what happens when the mode switch goes dicky in these, but I don't think they actually get out of alignment, but they will do some funny, I think sometimes changing modes is slow or it won't get there, it'll cut out and go back to the previous mode when you try to change from rewind to play or something like that. But um, they can just be, un again, you get the mechanism in the right position, so there's a little hole in that 
uh, mode switch. I think the wheel and the black plastic under it. There's a hole in the white wheel, the tooth wheel, and there's some sort of marked little V notch or something in the base bit. You just got to get them lined up before you take the mode switch out. Then you can just pop the top off it. Usually clean up with a cotton bud and some sort of slightly abrasive thing like Brasso to get the contacts clean. And then you can usually spray it with switch cleaner lubricant or something like that. Maybe bend the the um, there's a couple of little contacts on the the rotating wheel part. Uh, just retension them slightly, put it back together, and solder it back in. But, but making sure that you first align those two pieces together, and that should should get the machine running again. And um, other than that, they're fairly reliable mechanically. Um, and of course the Caps in the power supply are a common thing in these. I don't think I've actually had any other electronic issues with these machines. Um, normally the electronics is super reliable in these, just besides the hot power supply and the caps in that. I th may have had, there may be capacitors on the main board that go. I'm trying to remember now, but I don't think I've really had much to do with the main boards in these. Um, display boards, buttons, all this stuff's pretty reliable normally. And um, I think that's about it for this one. So, uh, thanks for watching.